Welcome to the Fox Learn. The UML is a visual language for modeling and communicating about systems through the use of diagrams and supporting text. A manager leads a team that executes a project. Each manager has a name and phone number, and may initiate a project or terminate a project. Each project has a name, start date, and end date. Each team has a description, and that is all we are interested in concerning the team. The three aspects of UML UML is an abbreviation for Unified Modeling Language. Each of these words speaks to an important aspect of the UML. Language, a language enables us to communicate about a subject. In system development, the subject includes the requirements and the system. Without a language, it is difficult for team members to communicate and collaborate to successfully develop a system. Model, a model is a representation of a subject. For example, to model and express the quantity of 5, the counting language uses 5 objects, whereas arithmetic uses the string 5. A model captures a set of ideas known as abstractions about its subject. Without a model, it is very difficult for team members to have a common understanding of the requirements and the system, and for them to consider the impact of changes that occur while the system is being developed. Unified, the term unified refers to the fact that the Object Management Group, OMG, an industry-recognized standardization organization, and Rational Software Corporation created the UML to bring together the information systems and technology industry's best engineering practices. These practices involve applying techniques that allow us to more successfully develop systems. Without a common language, it is difficult for new team members to quickly become productive and contribute to developing a system. Goals and Scope By understanding the OMG's goals and scope for the UML, we can better understand the motivations behind the UML. The OMG's goals were to make the UML ready to use, expressive, simple, precise, extensible, implementation independent, process independent. History the UML's history consists of five distinct time periods. By understanding these periods, you can understand why the UML emerged and how it is still evolving today. The fragmentation period, between the mid-1970s and the mid-1990s, organizations began to understand the value of software to business but only had a fragmented collection of techniques for producing and maintaining software. Amongst the various emerging techniques and methods that focused on producing and maintaining software more effectively, each having its own modeling languages, three methods stood out. Grady Butch's Butch 93 method, from Butch 91, emphasized the design and construction of software systems. James Rumbaugh's Object Modeling Technique, OMT, minus 2 method, from OMT1, 
emphasized the analysis of software systems. Ivor Jacobson's Object-Oriented Software Engineering OOSE, method emphasized business engineering and requirements analysis. The unification period, between the mid-1990s and 1997, the UML 1.0 emerged. James Rumbaugh, and later Ivor Jacobson, joined Grady Booch at Rational Software Corporation to unify their approaches. The standardization period, in the later half of 1997, the UML 1.1 emerged. All the RFP responses were combined into version 1.1 of the UML. The OMG adopted the UML and assumed responsibility for further development of the standard in November 1997. The revision period, the OMG charted a revision task force, RTF, to accept public comments on the UML and make minor editorial and technical updates to the standard. Various product and service vendors began to support and promote the UML with tools, consulting, books, and so forth. The industrialization period, in parallel with the revision period, the OMG is proposing the UML standard for international standardization as a publicly available specification, POT, via the International Organization for Standardization, ISO. The most current version of the UML specification is available from the OMG at http www.omg.org. Even though the UML is process independent, its authors promote a process that is use case driven, architecture centric, iterative, and incremental. By understanding how the UML is related to process and the type of process the UML's authors promote, you can better understand how to best approach learning the UML. However, any type of process even one without these characteristics may use the UML. Generally, every system development life cycle process involves the following types of life cycle activities. Requirements gathering activities to capture requirements that define what a system should do. Analysis activities to understand the requirements. Design activities to determine how a system will satisfy its requirements. Implementation activities to build a system. Testing activities to verify that a system satisfies its requirements. Deployment activities to make a system available to its users. There are many types of approach for applying these activities to develop a system. Traditionally, a waterfall approach has been applied. Now, an iterative approach is more common. Applying a waterfall approach, when applying a waterfall approach, life cycle activities are performed in a single, linear sequence for all the requirements. This often results in the discovery, during testing activities when the different pieces of the system are integrated, of quality-related problems that have remained hidden during the design and implementation activities. Consider a project that involves 10 requirements, perhaps the generation of 10 different types of reports where each report stems from a different requirement. Within a waterfall approach, all the requirements are captured and analyzed, and the whole system is designed, implemented, tested, and deployed in this linear sequence. Within such an approach, the UML may readily be used to communicate the requirements and description of the system. However, because activities are performed in a single linear sequence for all the requirements, the UML models must be fairly complete at each step. Applying an iterative approach When applying an iterative approach, any subsets of the life cycle activities are performed several times to better understand the requirements and gradually develop a more robust system. Each cycle through these activities or a subset of these activities is known as an iteration, 
and a series of iterations in a stepwise manner eventually results in the final system. This enables you to better understand the requirements and gradually develop a more appropriate system through successive refinement and incrementally gaining more detail as you do more and more iterations. Learning the UML can be quite overwhelming given the breadth and depth of the language and its lack of a process if you don't know on what parts of the UML to focus. But by understanding how the UML is related to process, you know to focus on the object-oriented paradigm, because it establishes the foundation for the UML. Structural modeling and behavioral modeling, because they allow you to understand requirements and architecture. Other capabilities of the UML. In addition, when learning the UML, it is important to focus on the essentials and understand how to effectively and successfully apply the UML to model systems rather than bog yourself down in trying to learn every comprehensive aspect of the language. Thank you for watching this video.